Hi, I'm Dan Ring, and welcome to the fourth tutorial on Nuke's Planar Tracker. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use additional inputs in planar tracking. Replacing screens with virtual ones or extending sets are common planar tracking tasks. Often the real screen or the area of the set to be extended may have been filmed with a green screen in place. Drawing roto shapes for tracking on green screens can sometimes be tricky, especially if there are lots of things occluding the screen. In these cases, it can be much easier to use a luma or chroma key to specify what areas you want to track, and Nuke's Planar Tracker lets you do just that. It's important to note here that the behavior of the Planar Tracker's additional input is different than that of the camera trackers. With the Planar Tracker, you use it to specify what areas you want to include in the track, whereas in the camera tracker, you use it to exclude regions. In this shot, we have a green screen that we want to track and replace with our logo. We also have a primat node which I've already set up to pull a chroma key, and an expression node for some hard cleanup. To track the screen, we're going to start by creating our planar tracker, but instead of drawing a shape, we're going to leave our track layer empty. We're then going to open the planar tracker node properties and change the additional input knob. There are lots of options here depending on how you want to work or what format your mask is in. For our setup, we're going to select Mask Inverted Alpha. This has two implications. One, that we're going to supply an alpha channel on the planar tracker node's mask input, and two, that by saying Inverted Mask, our track region will be specified where the pixel's alpha is zero. As you can see here from the expression node's mask overlay, this is exactly what we want. We now connect the planar tracker node's mask input to the expression node. And we're now ready to track. And we do this in exactly the same way as before. To see how the track went, we can display and move our planar surface on the reference frame and then scrub through the timeline. That all looks pretty good, so now let's throw in our logo and we're all set to go. As we want our logo to appear inside this frame here, we're going to select our read node and then select corner pin 2D absolute. As usual, we create our merge node. We'll get rid of the drawing handles and let's see how that track went. So that track looks pretty good. Now let's try something a little bit more difficult. In this shot, we have a very slow pan from the sky to the ground. The idea here is to try to track the sky in order to put a logo onto it. Here it's difficult to draw a shape in the first frame that will still exist in the last frame. This is a common problem in tracking panning shots where using the additional input of the planar tracker is very useful. We can see here that there's a nice blue sky here with clouds which would be perfect to pull a chroma key from. And this is exactly what we've done with the Primat node here. Again, we've used some extra nodes for cleanup. The Dilate node here is very important. It helps expand the alpha channel pixels so that we don't have any features being tracked on the cranes here. Going back to our original shot, we set up our planar tracker in exactly the same way. We open up the Planar Tracker node properties and set the additional input mask to Mask Inverted Alpha. We then set the mask input to our final crop node here. And from this, we can start tracking. We're going to start from the beginning and work our way to the end. If we look at the feature tracks, we can see some very pretty bird-like features in the sky. Notice that only the blue sky and cloud regions are being tracked. Now let's look at our planar surface just to make sure everything is okay and that the transform wasn't too extreme.
By this red color, it looks like the end of the track pushed the planar surface into an invalid state. So as in previous tutorials, we can go back to the reference frame and move the surface corners closer to the region we're tracking to fix this. Now if we scrub along, we can see that looks much better. Finally, let's place our logo into the sky plane to see how we did. I've already created a custom transform node here to warp the logo to where I want it in our reference frame. This means we don't need to create an absolute corner pin node, we actually want a relative corner pin node. We connect that up, and we create our merge node as usual. Now let's close our display handles and set the track on our loop so we can see it better. Now that track of the sky looks really solid and you can see how easy it was to specify the track region using a chroma key instead of using roto shapes. This concludes the fourth planar tracker tutorial.